Hey guys, what is going on? It's Brycat23 here with X Trades. I am going to walk you through a ticker that I really like in the near term, just based on recent price action and, and the price pattern that's been forming really over the last, you know, six to eight weeks primarily. And so we're going to just get right into it with Datadog. Uh, first thing I should mention is we're obviously coming out of just a longer term downtrend after all the growth that we saw and especially in tech and growth companies as a whole. Uh, Datadog did see a lot of selling pressure kind of in February and into March, uh, but since kind of mid-March, it's been consolidating a little bit. Granted, it's been over a wider range, but it's been consolidating and, and more or less trading trading sideways. There's been a little bit of downward pressure overall, but it's still been kind of consolidating and, and there's been a, a pretty good balance of buyers and sellers in the near term. But what I've noticed recently is that within this consolidation phase, we have an inverse head and shoulders that's been forming. And one of the things that I really like about it is the fact that for this bullish pattern, it's, it's almost made more bullish and, and more justifiably bullish because our left shoulder here is larger than our right shoulder. So that's kind of like a double confirmation that not only are we seeing less selling pressure on the next touch of resistance, on the next touch of this neckline with this right shoulder, but we're also just seeing less of a reaction in price, which you'd expect uh, when you get that lesser selling pressure. So it's really nice to see that the sentiment is is visually changing. You can see that even though it's it's a head and shoulders pattern, our right shoulder is definitely more bullish than our left shoulder was. And just seeing that differential in height and the smaller retracement can really give you a little more comfort in the fact that this is a bullish pattern and and there's likely going to be a nice pop if we do get that bullish breakout of this 94 price range as we expected. So it's really nice to see that right shoulder coming in higher than the left shoulder. And obviously it's coming in much higher than the head. Um, so it's a really nice setup overall as far as the pattern goes. As you can see, the rejection here off this, uh, off this neckline came on much lower volume than any of the previous rejections that we had. And it also came on uh, much lower than just average volume. So it's really nice to see that all of this volume is kind of drying out and the sellers are getting exhausted and the buyers are not hesitant to step up and participate and take this thing higher. So it's really nice to see all that low selling pressure and this small retracement in price uh, kind of having confluence with our bullishness based on the price pattern. Additionally, we do have a really nice crossover that happened in the near term. Just I, I have 20 day and 50 day simple moving averages as a default. I know that the time frame is four hours, but these are hard coded. So these are actual daily moving averages. So it is nice to see that near term uh, moving average showing shrink relative to the longer term moving average. And again, you can definitely see that in the price, even though prices have trended downwards and we're still technically kind of in that downtrend, it's nice to see that the near term bullish sentiment is shifting and that there's more pressure and more momentum uh, with the bulls in the near term. And then as far as the actual inverse head and shoulders goes, the percentage meeting price target, according to the patternsite.com, is right around 70%. So that's, that's a really nice percentage meeting price target. And based on that, we can kind of project price targets if we do get that bullish breakout that we expect. So just remember that this only applies really if we do get that bullish breakout. It, it doesn't apply kind of retroactively you have to break out above your actual trend line resistance. And then once that happens, they typically reach price target about 70% of the time. So don't get into this early and, and, and be too eager with it. Find the right entry 
And, and once we get that breakout, then we could see a nice move in price. And then you have a clear stop where this resistance line is. And that should act as your new support and stop loss once we get trading above that price level. But at any rate, the 70% meeting price target in conjunction with the height of our pattern, which is about $20, that gives me an expected move of about $14, right? So I'm taking that $20 and just multiplying it by the factor of uh, 0.7 to get that expected move because these do meet price target 70% of the time. So that in conjunction with our breakout level being 94, gives us a potential longer term price target of 108. And that actually has confluence with a recent peak. Uh, so the peak kind of came on a, I guess, a bit of a dead cat bounce almost back in uh, late February, where we kind of bounced off of a bottom and, and retraced up to 107 and then uh, continued the downtrend. But ultimately, that's kind of what I'm targeting for a longer term price target based on the price target of this inverse head and shoulders and also just the clear pressure that exists at this 107 price level. You know, I definitely don't want to get caught hanging on to a couple extra cents if there is some serious selling pressure there. And you can see it was a sensitive price area even before then back in January, it, there was definitely some selling pressure and some sensitivity in that price range. So really would like that 107, 108 price level as the long-term price target. Um, I have it labeled here as, you know, less than eight weeks. That's really kind of an approximation. Again, for these price patterns, I usually take the price target and the duration of the consolidation phase into account. So I'll usually take a look at how long that this has been trending. And then I'll essentially just apply that to my price target. So this has been trending uh, since about, you know, the 15th of April. And obviously we're in uh, kind of the second week of June. So we're really looking at about two months or about eight weeks. So that's kind of where I formed my longer term price target because I'd expect that to play out in about two months, again, based on the fact that this consolidation phase has taken place over two months. And then a shorter term price target that I like is kind of targeting this, uh, this 100, 101 price level. Um, again, I think that this is a good area. It's a 50% extension of our full price target. Uh, and again, it's an area where we saw a rejection from and we saw some sensitivity at this price level previously so in the near term if we do get a strong breakout this is definitely an area where we could see some selling and where we could see some resistance so if you're kind of more bullish in the shorter term or you take a riskier play uh, then you could definitely see some selling pressure in this area and you know in in the near term this could be a sticky price zone but in the longer term, again, I would definitely like to see that kind of 108 price level uh, over the next two months, essentially, once breakout does occur, uh, if we do get that break above 94. So really like the setup overall here with D-Dog. I think that there's just a lot going for it. You know, we have bullish crossovers, uh, kind of dynamic support zones now. Um, and then we also have some just bullish momentum in the near term. Obviously, it looks good in terms of potentially breaking out because of the lack of selling pressure at this neckline. And again, because of the height of this right shoulder being so much higher than the left shoulder, really a good sign to see that they're just, again, both price and volume are agreeing that there's a lack of selling relative to uh, previous attempts at this price level. Um, and again, I really would like to see uh, these price targets be reached in both the near term and the long term, 108 being the longer term price target, 101 being the nearer term price target, and that 50% extension uh, of our price target. So really like the setup overall here, and I do think that there's good value in it. 
If you guys have any questions about the setup or anything that I covered in this video, please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I'm happy to ask uh, to answer any questions that you might have. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching the video today. Uh, keep an eye on Data Dog this week. I'm, I'm hoping for some good moves and hopefully we get that break above 94 and, and can make a nice uh, high probability and strong risk to reward trade uh, based on this inverse head and shoulders that we're seeing. So thank you guys so much. Again, leave a comment, ask a question. I'm, I'm happy to help if you have any questions. So thanks so much for joining and have a great day. Bye.